Hi guys, so we're on um, chapter six, aren't we, of Pugs of the Frozen North? And I know Miss Bate read some to you last week. So we were introduced, weren't we, um, at the start line of the race. We were introduced to Helga Hammerfest, one of the contestants, and also Sir Basil Sprout Dump Sir Basil Sprout Dumpling, another one of the contestants in the race to the end of the world. Okay. So, let's start. Yes, Sir Basil said side plate sadly, holding his bowler hat on tight and wishing he'd worn warmer underwear. But if I may say so, Sir Basil, I do hope cheating won't be necessary. Sir Basil wasn't listening. I say, he cried. For the pink sled that had just pulled up next to him held none other than Mitzi von Prim, the most glamorous of all the racers. How embarrassed her team of huskies looked, clipped like poodles and dyed pink to match Mitzi's stylish racing outfit. There we go, look. Those four were not the only entrants for the race. There were dozens of others, modern sleds with sat-nav and central heating, age-old sleds of wood and bone, a sled folded out of stiff paper by an origami master from Japan, and an inflatable sled advertising poo be gone, poop scoops. There was even a sled crewed by two ladies who were doing the race for charity dressed as a pantomime zebra. It took quite a while to get them all sorted out and arranged along the start, starting line. The overexcited do dogs woofed and yapped and howled and sniffed each other's bottoms and started fights. The overexcited race marshals skated to and fro, checking that nobody was cheating and no dog or polar bear had its nose over the line. They had almost finished and the chief marshal was just cleaning the snow out of her starting pistol and getting ready to fire it when people standing near the fjord's end began to shout, Wait! Wait! Here comes another! Who do you think it might be? A ripple of applause spread along the fjord side as the late arrival headed for the starting line. That looks like young Seeker in her grandpa's old sled, said the chief marshal, scraping away the ice that had formed on the lenses of her binoculars. But what are those little woolly things pulling it? They look like 66 pugs, said her assistant. Pugs, said the chief marshal. Pugs, said the other racers, turning to stare as Seeker steered the old sled into a gap between Sir Basil's and Mitzi von Prim's and Shen reigned in the eager little dogs. I say, complained Sir Basil, as the marshals came skating over to take the names of the new arrivals, they've got 66 dogs. That's against the rules. And those dogs are wearing woolly jumpers, agreed Mitzi. I'm not sure that's allowed. But Helga Hammerfest, whose sled was on the other side of Mitzi's, said, Well, dear, your huskies are dyed pink and have ribbons in their fur. I don't think you'll find that mentioned in the rule book either. Mitzi blushed and her pink, her poor pink dogs all hung their heads in shame. And Shackleton Jones's sled is pulled by robot dogs, Helga pointed out. These are Woof Zerotron 2000s, my very, very latest invention, said Shackleton Jones proudly. And those 66 little dogs are each about a tenth of the size of one of yours, Sir Basil, Helga went on. And you've got eight, so you've got more dog power than these youngsters. What's the matter? Afraid that smart sled of yours won't be as fast as their antique? Of course not, said Basil, said Sir Basil. But he didn't say it very loudly because Helga was half as tall as him and twice as wide. And he didn't fancy getting into an argument with her. Also, her polar bears kept giving him nasty looks. So the chief marshal wrote Shen and Seeker's names on her clipboard and stepped into the little balloon that was waiting on the fjord side to carry her up above the starting line. Shen and Seeker had left the poe of ice in a terrible hurry, 
having quickly packed the sled with supplies for themselves and the pugs. All the way to Snowdovia, they had been worrying that they would be too late. Now Seeker turned to Shen and beamed, We did it! Shen was not so sure. They were in the race, but that was only the beginning. How could they hope to win it when the other sleds looked so speedy? Okay, tune in tomorrow to find out what happens next.